tired. Like oh I, God, I don't I even understand why I have to be shouting. Hi, good so. evening. Hey, what's going on? Hey, what's up? What's up? Are they cool? I came across this image uh -huh. and I thought that it would have been really, Let me really see the cool. Image now. Well, just now, now. And I thought <laughs> it would have been really cool if you know we analyze the image from like a semantics perspective. Yeah. See? Yeah. From a semantics perspective and see, you know, how we could generate me to. Meaning. I can't remember meeting. Meaning. <laughs> <laughs> meaning <laughs> from it. No, girl, I wish you were something I hungry. <laughs> yes, if you could generate me. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. 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 So what school are we using? Semiotics? Yeah, semantics and... Alright, yeah. yeah. So naturally we're discussing denotation and connotation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What else? But what else we, what else we could include in the same? But when I look at it, I think it has some myths at work here. And ideology, because you know, that's my area. I always love to talk about ideology. Can you see the picture again? Sorry. Um, what else? Apart from ideology, I think we could do men. quotes. Quotes? Quotes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hassan, quotes are yeah. too. Well, you know, all right. Comfortable. Yeah, so that's a lot to cover. Let me start with denotation. Well, only firstly, right? Mm -hmm. Only know that denotation, according to Roland Bass, is the first order signification. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. it's basically common sense. Uh -huh. The obvious or literal meaning of a sign. Let me see this photo. That's mm -hmm. I. This photo depicts to me some creature-like figure knocking on a closed door, mm -hmm. right? Cloaked in red, blue, and white, mm -hmm. with what seems to appear like a scythe in his hand, mm -hmm. the other doors portray a prominent darkness coming from the doors with streaks mm -hmm. of red blood coming, f as coming from the doors as well. Mm -hmm. Above the doors are names of countries yeah. okay. and this creature seemed is what seemed to cause the, um, the blood. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The creature? I yeah. That. Mm -hmm. But what creature? creature. Those creatures that... Anybody know who that is? They kind of look familiar by Carly. That's a group of people. Like, like, no man, all the nuts, all the nuts. I thought that's all the nuts. I thought the image about you giving me. No, no. Yeah. okay. Got her own little children. Let me tell you. That story. <laughs> she always has a story. Got her own. She always has some kind of story. It's back and forth. Many years ago. Many years ago. Excuse me. Many years ago, in ancient mythology, the Grim Reaper is death with a capital D. <laughs> <laughs> he is perhaps the most recognized entity of all time, neither ghost nor god. The Grim Reaper is a psycho pump whose job is to conduct the souls of the recently dead into the afterlife. He is often depicted as a tall, pale, skeletal figure shrouded in a long, dark, black hooded cloak wielding a scythe which he uses to harvest souls. Mm -hmm. Although some accounts say he just touches the person to pop their souls so they don't appear <laughs> to feel pain when they die. The Grim Reaper is known for not saying much. He always has a grin on his face. Like and of you. course, <laughs> Sorry. the main focus of attention is whatever room he is in. He is able to turn his head completely around oh <laughs> like in the Lullablen way so that he can survey his domain. <laughs> the Reaper must be vigilant lest someone try in some cases to cheat him. The Reaper is able to call <laughs> Someone's death, which have led to other stories of it being able to bribe, trick, or outwit others in order to save them or cheat them from their lives. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, interesting. I always thought yeah. he was a skeleton, man. Yeah. Is that whole story behind here, though? All right, so let me see if I can grab my notes from, um, based on what you said about what his name is again, the Grim Reaper. Yeah, the Grim Reaper. I thought, you know, it's Bubba from now on. It's Bubba. <laughs> Okay, so we're using our connotation notes from class, right? So, mm -hmm. according to Chanda, connotation describes sociocultural and personal associations with the sign, right? So, it refers to like our emotions and our interpretations, our personal values, our cultural values, even ideologies, right? So, for example, how we interpret the Grim Reaper as death. Like, mm -hmm. how we know that it's death is because we put our values to so what a skull is true. and whatnot, and him yeah, carrying true, the true, sword true. and so on. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like how fists say too that um, what denotation is photographed 
what is photographed and and conditions how it is photographed yes Yes. so but then the interesting thing is Mm -hmm. too that you know when we look at it even in trying to describe it how we know that is blood so most um most theorists think that you can't dis disconnect denotation from connotation you have to so like there's this guy well valentin vlashina he's like yeah i can't even pronounce it properly right (laughs) he says that there's no distinct division between denotation and connotation because as he says referential meaning is molded by evaluation Meaning is always permeated with value judgment. Yeah. So from the time we start looking at this picture, even without knowing it, we start evaluating the entire text. And, like and so that's true. how we yeah. come yeah. in. Yeah. 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 yeah, true. So that's like a, a like denotation is another connotation. Yeah. 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 I think that's 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 not that even um, interpretation is subjective. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like based on yeah, your yeah, experience. Yeah. That's of, true. So yeah, all of falling. True. So what you're saying is that all of this is falling into context. Yes. That's yeah. what I understand. Yeah. Okay, cool. But I find that we're still missing something. Because I mean at the end of the day <laughs> listen to me. <laughs> I mean at the end of the day, how do we even know that the Grim Reaper is representing America? Like think about true, it. How do we true. even know wait, I still talking. How do we even know that the Grim Reaper is a person, or the, sorry, the creature, or the Baba, is the person <laughs> <laughs> that is causing the bloodshed coming out of all the other doors. Mm-hmm. How do we even know that the things on top, well, the characters, or what we would say are words, represent countries? And as the semiotician who opposite, he said that, you know, it's codes, the concept of codes that allows us to have this kind of intellectual, intelligible discourse with the image itself. Mm-hmm. And using the whole dimension with paradigmatic, and you all remember when Sean was talking about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Syntagmic. 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 Right. Whatever. Yes. But it's a paradigmatic and syntagmatic element or dimension in the photo. So, like, look at it. You have the Grim Reaper. He's in red, white, and blue. And we know that to be units from this, the paradigm of the set of colors, mm-hmm. right? And then the, the, the stars that are on the Grim Reaper, that comes from the paradigm of shapes. Mm-hmm. But those chosen units are then combined to form a syntab. Even the same thing with the, on the side, that same thing comes in with yeah, color the color and the stars. Yeah. And now that exactly. represents the flag of Israel. It's right. right. And the thing it's is... So, it's so ironic that they use the two The two of them together. together. Yeah. yeah. But at the end of the day, you see how we were quickly able to identify that it's America and that it's yeah. Israel. It's because of the commonalities. It has been established mm-hmm. that this are what this is what it represents: the American flag mm-hmm. and the Grim Reaper. Yeah. But then my question is also: How do we even know this? Is the same thing for Syria? The, the words that are above the letter of above the doors, mm-hmm. S Y R I A, are just units chosen from the alphabet, which is also a paradigm. Yeah. Yeah. But strung together, and we have also been cultured to understand that that represents the country, the Syria. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right? It's a syntam though, the S Y R I A put together the syntam, not a paradigm. Oh shucks. Yeah. Bro, sorry. <laughs> Can I get oh, Yeah. Whatever. But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mess yeah. with the flow. Right? <laughs> but then the last thing I asked you all too, like how do we even know that it's the Grim Reaper who caused all the bloodshed? And it's because of as Derrida would say, he said um, that it's the perception, right? It's, it's all about perception mm-hmm. and how we perceive things. Yeah. And there's this um, perceptual code that is also at play within the image, and right? The structuralist point of view coming into play, yeah, but post-structuralist is... um, point of view coming into play. Exactly. Yeah, because he was a post-structural theorist. Derrida. Yes, Jack right. Derrida. Well, I don't remember that, but you know, little French now. <laughs> <laughs> right, but is the perceptual code so it's like the whole principle of similarity so because we see in the grim reaper literally knocking on the door right we kind of trying to fill in the gaps so we say that okay the door that he's knocking on is similar to the doors that preceded where he is yeah. there right and we see that the word on top even egypt is also part of the middle east as we see in the yeah. thing. so it's like we're filling in the gaps so then we're saying well you know what he's the person who's causing the bloodshed and all of the other coming out of all the other doors you know so that is a perceptual but not of only are we saying that he's the person but we are we can we can easily, easily align america as the one that is causing the bloodshed yeah. right. and unnecessarily the the grim reaper mm-hmm. per se true, true. Because it's kind of like the grim reaper is america he's clad true. in the american flag that and is the that message is that is being portrayed because codes are symbolic exactly they are arbitrary so i think that's perfect yeah yeah, yeah. yeah.
and then what I what I even see um according to what I think we, we even discussed in class is that it brings up the idea of myths uh -huh. because a myth is a story by which a culture explains or understands some aspect of reality or nature a myth is also culture's way of thinking so what we need to understand though is that the ideas that the, is the idea that myths are like extended metaphors okay and they are based on connections that we make in terms of comparisons and connections and we build meaning upon these okay so i see the dominant myth that mm -hmm. prevails here is that america is portraying itself as being good mm -hmm. you know through the character of the grim reaper meaning that he's supposed to be a, a kind of good guy even okay. though he may seem a little evil but america is in fact evil and destructive I agree because with that. of the blood Sorry. coming out and the fact you know that he is now that it was kind of like in succession and the patterns that we see coming out that America is a bit destructive. Mm -hmm. And the thing about myths is that the thing about myths is that they do not deny things. On the contrary, but it function is to talk about them, mm -hmm. giving them a clarity which is not an explanation but mm -hmm. a statement of facts. So I found that was real interesting mm -hmm. because if we use the Grim Reaper folklore, mm -hmm. the dominant myth of America being good comes into play. Because the Grim Reaper now, who was supposed to just ease you from your pain of suffering by, by allowing you to die peacefully and to take you into the afterlife. Mm -hmm. It's like if it's saying that these countries were already dying mm -hmm. and that America has come in mm -hmm. to just ease them from the stress and the suffering Ooh. that they were going okay, through. Yeah, and that America now puts on the face of being good. But we are seeing that not only is it good because why is it so much blood? Coming, coming out, out of all these countries. So true. Some myths, I mean, are so important in terms of understanding this entire. Mm -hmm. image. Well, then it's not really leaving any space for any kind of other interpretation. Though. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. The culture of America being good. Mm -hmm. I don't think America is good. That's why they put the Grim Reaper mm -hmm. in uh, the card in the American flag and Israel mm -hmm. with the site as you know the symbol of the site mm -hmm. because yeah. um the whole ideology is that america like like this guy that i was reading i think he's a marxist theorist mm -hmm. louis althusser mm -hmm. he was talking about hegemony and we know marx like to talk about economics and you know mm -hmm. um economic hegemony and political hegemony and <laughs> hegemony hege hegemony <laughs> tomato tomato come okay, on yes come come on. On. I, you know what We're i mean hegemonic <laughs> hegemony yeah a little stush <laughs> yeah. um, he was talking about, you know, hegemony mm -hmm. and that um, America is really a superpower on the global um, economic, um, global, global economic uh, scale as well yeah. as politically. And American and Western political and economic ideology is kind of portrayed as Westernization and globalization at its best, really yeah. and truly. So I think it's America going in, trying to uh, infiltrate their ideologies of America mm -hmm. being good and mighty yeah. and great and powerful mm -hmm. yeah, on the Middle so. East. And even if you look at the order yeah. of, you know, the names on the doors, they're, they're not just there mm -hmm. um, ad hoc. America had an influence in Afghanistan in the aftermath mm -hmm. of 9-11, so America always goes in for a specific interest and mm -hmm. when it only affects them, okay. why didn't America go into Rwanda? True. And this is the whole um, notion that they're trying to portray that America is trying to infiltrate the Middle Eastern country with their ideology of power and religion. Religion has a big part to play in it as well. Mm -hmm. Middle it's Eastern country, yeah, Arabic and Islamic. Exactly. So, yeah. And that's the thing. Uh, ideology and signification are kind of married to each other. So I think it's America True. trying to be portrayed as good and clean up the situation. That's why there's all that blood. Yeah. Okay, and so that's another interpretation yeah. because of ideology. And you know, as you were saying that, um, Kia, you know, as, as the way how you said the flag of Israel and America and stuff. And, and yeah. Yeah, America and Israel are allies, but Israel, because of their um, religious difference in the Middle East, mm -hmm. they're enemy. Okay. Look at that, eh? and look yeah. at how the media through this cartoon was able to put out these ideologies and these myths, myths and that we are now codes, able to generate, yeah. you know, codes, through the codes and stuff, and, and generate, you know, this whole entire discussion over one little picture that, yeah. you know, in conclusion, one little picture. In conclusion, I think that the um, the image is both arbitrary because we could put our meaning into it, right. as well right. as iconic, as Luke and Harriman put it. Mm -hmm. Um, therefore, the whole image itself is metaphorical. It's really that's really true. Yeah, it's right. that's yeah, awesome. that. yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. I can write an essay on this now. I saw yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could. Oh, you guys are like the best, and yeah. thank you Thanks. for doing my homework. 
But guys, no, I'm tired though, and I'm hungry. You just so. did my homework for me. I really yeah, appreciate yeah. it. I'm ready to go. Anyway, let's.